Hello, my name is Priscilla and I am a registered nurse. I work for an infusion company and I am here to show you how to give your IV antibiotics in the elastomeric pump method. What is an elastomeric? An elastomeric pump is only, cert it's only for certain medications. This medication list includes vancomycin, zosin, ertapenem, meropenem, sometimes penicillins, and other medications. Please follow your infusion company's policies and your doctor's guidelines before making any decisions to move forward with your infusion. This is a education video to show you what to look for, how to give the medication, go over the supplies, and also go over your kick line and midline care. So first off, let's go over the pump. So the elastomeric pump is a pressurized ball where it will be given at a certain rate once you hook this up to your IV and you open up the clamp. The clamp is essentially activating the medication to self-infuse. The ball is pretty firm when you first receive it and that's how you know it's full. Everything becomes, everything comes primed and ready to go when you get your shipment. This is what it looks like when it's empty. As you can see the difference, the empty ball is deflated and it looks like a raisin when it's already emptied. So it takes about one to two hours for it to completely infuse inside your body. Now this does depend on the medication. We do have medication balls that are given over a 24 hour period. We have some that are given over a few hours. So it really does depend on your order and which antibiotic you're on. The medication ball needs to be kept in the refrigerator. We give you a week's supply at a time, so we need to make sure that you keep this in the refrigerator for stability. When it's time for you to actually give the medication, we want you to take the medication ball out of the refrigerator so it's room temperature. So the key component to this is that you definitely want this to be room temperature for it to run effectively. If it's cold, it may run slower, and then it does make the patient more chilly. So the best thing to do is to set an alarm clock to make sure that you take it out at the appropriate time. We also will go over how to flush your IV. These are the um, different three flushes that we have. We have the saline flushes, which is meant to clean before and after, and then the heparin flush. Heparin is an anticoagulant. It's a blood thinner. It prevents your IV from developing clots. We will go over how to clean with alcohol swabs, and then on your IV, we will be giving you a green Kiros cap. These are alcohol covers. They keep your port clean when you're not using it and preventing bacteria buildup. So we are going to go over my instructions that I have here on the other screen. We give your IV through a sash method, as you can see. So what you wanna do is you wanna flush your IV with saline and then you give the antibiotic, you flush with saline after, and then you want to give heparin. Remember, heparin is only prescribed by doctors who would like for you to give heparin. Not every physician orders it, so please refer to your ordering um, prescription before doing anything. So the first step is to take the medication out of the refrigerator about two hours before, so it's at room temperature. After that, you want to wash your hands, you want to scrub and wash your hands for 30 seconds. That's equivalent to two birthday songs. You want to scrub very rigorously. After you wash your hands, you want to take some paper towels and you want to turn off the faucet and make sure you don't touch anything. After that, you can apply gloves. And now we're going to go through the steps. So, number one is to wash your hands, which we already did. Number two, Open up the IV clamp if it's present. Some pick lines and some midlines will have a clamp. It does depend on the hospital you're at and depends on the type of pick lines. If you see a clamp on your extension, go ahead and open it. With this extension, all you do is you slide the white clamp over to open. If you don't see a clamp on your pick line or your midline, don't worry about it. It's only there if you're, um, it depends on your certain pick lines. Number three, we are going to clean the IV port with alcohol swab for 15 seconds. That's equivalent to one happy birthday song. 
And so this is a nursing term, we call it scrub the hub for 15 seconds. When you're cleaning your port, just be super careful that you don't disconnect the port from the pick line. So just be careful when you're cleaning. Okay, number four, we're gonna flush with saline. So we're going to take our first flush. If you've never flushed before, you can see that there's an air bubble in each flush. So what you wanna do is you want to unscrew the cap and you want to squirt the plunger all the way up until you get rid of the air bubble. Okay, once you do that, we're going to connect your syringe to your port by using the push and twist method. You have to twist to lock it in. After that, we are going to flush by using the push pause method. That means you're going to push and then pause. Push, pause, push, pause, push, pause. The flushes can be given pretty fast. When you're done, disconnect. We're gonna grab a new swab and clean in between for 15 seconds. We always grab a new one because everything that you use, you only use once. Everything is a one-time use and you dispose of it. Okay, so clean that. Number six, we are going to hook up the antibiotic. You wanna take the end of the tubing here, take the cap off. You don't need to clean anything with the cap. And you're going to insert it the same way you do with the syringes. We're going to push and twist to lock it in. Once you have, I did not lock enough, once you have the tubing connected, we're gonna go to your clamp. So make sure there's no knots or kinks here. Go to the clamp, and what you wanna do is you wanna open it. To open it, what you wanna do is pull this part back. So hold it with one hand, and then you're gonna pull this flat end back so that it's open. This is what it looks like when there's an open clamp. After you do that, the medication is free to go for about an hour. So your job is to make sure that the medication ball is shrinking and that there are no knots or kinks in your tubing. The only way you can tell if it's going in is if the medication ball is shrinking over time. There's really no other way for you to monitor if it's going in. So just make sure you keep an eye on it and make sure you don't get yourself tangled or get anything pulled that may hinder your IV location. Because this is a self-pressurized ball, it does not need to be hung. It's given by pressure and not gravity. So most people will just put it in their pocket and they can walk around with it. Um, you can use a fanny pack or a shoulder bag, anything that you wish, but just like I said, be careful that you don't tangle yourself with the cord. Okay, depending on the medication, let's say this is only gonna run for an hour, we're going to disconnect. So to disconnect, number eight on the instruction sheet, says once, it's once the IV infusion is finished, you wanna clamp, you wanna disconnect the tubing. Number nine, we're gonna clean again. So basically, any time you disconnect something from your port, we're gonna clean. Clean for 15 seconds or one happy birthday song. And then now we're gonna flush. Because remember, you always flush before and after. I'm going to show you another way to flush your IV. So the best method is to take out the air bubble. However, if you forget to take the air bubble, there's another way you can flush. So if you hooked up your IV and you didn't take the air bubble out, that's okay. What you wanna do is turn the syringe so it's upside down and that the air is floating at the top. And when you flush, push, pause, push, pause. You wanna push it down until you see the air bubble and then stop, and then stop. You want to avoid bubbles into your IV line. If you accidentally flush that little one, it's okay. Your body will absorb it, but you want to avoid air bubbles at all costs. When you're done, you disconnect. We're gonna clean again. And if the heparin is prescribed, we're gonna flush the heparin.
take out the air bubble. And then connect, push and twist. I still see a little bit of air bubble in there, so I'm just not gonna go all the way down. Just like that. The reason why the heparin is the very last flush is because now it's coating your IV pick line or IV midline, just to ensure that there's no buildup in the IV. When you're done, disconnect, grab a new swab, and now we're going to cap it off with a brand new cap. So we're gonna grab a brand new one. After that is capped off, we are going to clamp, if there is a clamp, and then you're done. Everything gets disposed, nothing is recycled. If you do have more than one IV, some people go home with more than one, then you definitely want to flush the other IV line. And to flush the other IV line, all you do is you grab the saline and another heparin, and you want to go through the same steps. So that means you would go to your second line, you want to take the cap off, clean it for 15 seconds, flush the saline, clean it for 15 seconds, and then flush the heparin, clean it for 15 seconds, and then apply a brand new green cap. So it really depends if you go home with more than one. If you ever run into issues with your IV where you can't flush or you're having issues with the site, please contact your nurse right away and they can come out and see you and assess you. In regards to your pick line or midline, you want to make sure you keep the area clean and dry. If you see any redness, swallowing, swallowing any pain, you definitely wanna call your nurse or your doctor to get that evaluated. So just to ensure when you are home, make sure you keep it clean and dry. If you do wish to, if you can shower, you want to cover it, and I recommend using saran wrap and a trash bag. You wanna do everything you can to keep it clean and dry. If you have any questions, you have the infusion company's number. Usually they're 24 hour, they have a 24 hour pharmacy available, and then you have your nurses as well. Thank you.